Oh God, what an interesting video yesterday was. Loads of comments. And it was about St. Peter's, a printer. That sort of pseudo-mythical, legendary, historical, archaeological site that is on the top of a hill. Now, there are lots of comments and it's just really complicated. Um, I wouldn't say it's opened up a can of worms. It's opened up a can of really nice soup with a nice roll on the side if we can get this moving. So, if, so a few people are asking, um, what can we do to get things moving at St. Peter's? Um, is it money, whatever, and so on? And a few people were saying that they, they, they go up there and they actively, they actually do actively do things. So... And there's a few other issues that have come up that I just wanted to sort of um, get out there. And I think this is going to be a theme that I'll be doing tomorrow as well. So first things first. Um, uh, Monica mentioned that uh, there's this stone that uh, was found at the site with inscriptions on it. Right. Fair enough. OK. Um, we're not going to doubt the authenticity or whatever. We're not, we, we don't need to do that. As uh, As somebody said... In another recording, um, why why am I out there looking at stuff that's already been discussed? Okay, that's fair enough. So, the thing is, it's in the it's in the United States, and I'm thinking, I'm gonna, I, I I yeah, I'm not going to swear, but f me, you know, what the hell is it doing in the United States? Okay, it's in the United States for its safekeeping. Okay, so how the hell do you get that back? A stone with inscriptions on it. Um, UNESCO um, sort of antiquities code and all the rest of it. How, 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 God. So that that's a big one, and uh, you know it, it, that that that's an issue that um, my postgraduate diploma's in with Leicester, uh, looking at sort of the trade in antiquities and the movement of artifacts and all the rest of it. And it's just God. Um, so we'll just leave that one there for now, right? That that's going to have to be dealt with. The main thing is the church, right? So, um, pers personally, I think the best thing to do with the church is it needs a group of volunteers to go up there every single day to monitor it. Right, okay. So, the next thing we need is to actively do stuff there, right? So, litter picking, sort of, um, sort of cutting things back. So, you know, th th anyone can do that, but... It does need some coordination. Now, I, I know people in that area, the farmers and so on, are really anti the church being there and why are people um, interested in it? Well, you know, it's tough, right? It, it's an archaeological historical monument. It needs to be looked after. It needs to be safeguarded. It needs not to be lost. So so I think the, that's the first thing. Um, a, a group of people... That, that can go up there as volunteers to keep an eye on it every single day. Right. So when that's achieved, when we've got a regular flow of people, you know, sort of loving it and keeping an eye, I think the next thing to do, right, number two, is to get some trip cameras to actually work out what's going on up there when people ain't up there. Right. So that, that you know, trip cameras ain't really expensive. So that needs to be looked at. Because the the few things the, the the things that I know about St Peter's is obviously nineteen eighties Black and Wilson buys it and there's a load of um, from what I'm told there's a load of um, shareholders in the site and the ownership is spread around the world or whatever to keep the site safeguarded. Okay, we, oh right, we we'll go with that one, right? So I uh, there was a there was a fence around it one time and there was a gate and the fence and the gate were taken down by someone and um, whoever that was didn't want the, the site to be sort of kept safe now um, the argument was that the fence was put um, on the wrong side of the boundary of the wall between the farmer and um, obviously you know um, the ownership of the, the church itself so which is at my my French which is bollocks um, you know, I, 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 I own land. This is where I am now and whatever, um, you know, the local farmers wouldn't really be bothered if it's, if it's an inch there, an inch there. 
as long as everybody's looking after the landscape and safeguarding it, fine. So I think um, the, the, the only way of fencing it off would be to put the fence inside the boundary of the wall, right? So that means that if the farmer wants to kick off, then he can't because it's, it's within the boundary of the wall. Not on top of the wall, not on the other side of the wall, within the... We just, just keep everybody happy, for fuck's sake. My, my friends are just small. Uh, do apologise, uh, YouTube. Um, but um, but keep everybody happy. Right, so that's the th first thing. And we need a little bit of a gate in there. So that's that. So where are we now? That's that's the third thing, right? Now, somebody else wrote there as well that, they, that they've been going up there and they've been doing some conservation work on the walls. Bring it on. Right? Yeah, go for it. Do you know one thing, right? Um, you know, okay, I'm not going to look at my credentials again. You can look that up. It don't matter, right? But, uh, you know, I, I've been to Cadu own sites, and I'll, I'll tell you now, when this is a point, East Orchard Castle, right? Not Cadu own site, Cadu safeguarded sites or whatever, right? East Orchard Castle near Merthyr Mawr. Um, they spent about 200 grand on conserving the walls and, and sort of doing up the walls of the castle. And within five years, there's ivy growing up in it again, right? So I don't care, right? If Cadu gets to hear this, a few years back, I took a group of um, um, AC students down there, Archaeology Cymru, and uh, we saw all this ivy and we ripped it off the walls. That's it. We ripped it off, right, before it could root. And then... Yeah, Cadu, if you want to prosecute me, you just go for it, right? I would bring it on, heritage, crappy little organisation, right? I don't give a damn about our heritage. And then what, what we've done in the past is we've gone down there, we've done, we've done clear-ups, we've done ivy clear-ups and all these other things. But because, because there's now the dodgy issue of Rory McLagan, the, the nut job that owns Merthyr Mawr Estates that uh, um, is nothing but money, right? And he technically owns the site, but can do. I don't know what agreement there is, right? Um, and he wanders around with a shotgun. I, I, you know, we, we've stopped doing anything there. But the fact of the matter is, this is what I'm saying, right? I'm, I'm going on. I'm, I'm, I'm whittering on, right? But the point is, um, with any archaeological sites, whether they're Cadu safeguarded or whatever, right? They're our heritage. If you want to go down there and make a contribution to help out with these sites, right? Just do it. Um, could you imagine that? Go to court. Oh, I removed a few weeds and a bit of rubbish and Cadu are prosecuting you. Crap. But St. Peter's is not safeguarded by any of that, right? So there's nothing stopping anyone doing anything, right? Personally, the fabric of the building above ground, right? Um, if if somebody goes there with a bit of cement and whatever, right, it's, it's not going to do any damage. Uh, anything that anyone does there, would would help the site, right? Whether it's the right or the wrong thing to do, it would help the site. Just just go right. So, so it's being active, right? And the the fourth thing, as I just said, being active there to sort of safeguard it is the same as the first thing. A group of people getting together and and sort of um, looking at this. Well, my email address is down below. So if you, if you want to sort of contact me and say right, and the thing is right. Yeah, I'm not asking Blackett and Wilson permission to safeguard this site. I'm going above everybody's head. I don't give a fuck, right? This is our history and archaeology, right? And and uh, there are people trying to do some stuff with St. Peter's. Let's just rev her up and do something more with St. Peter's. That's what I'm saying, right? And, and you know, what happened, right? Um, I'm going to probably get this wrong. It's St. Michael's, isn't it? At Cairo, right? Or is that St. Peter's? Anyway, right. The point is with Cairo Church, right? Let's do. A, let's talk about Cairo Church. In about 1985, right, um, I went there with my granddad, Noah. And the church roof was still on, right? The tower still stood. The porch was still there. Did I say 1985? Yeah, I'm going to repeat it. 1985, the little church on the top of uh, Cairo, Hillfort in, in, in Cardiff, right? So anyway, and uh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm just going to double check the bloody name of the church, actually, um, on my other phone. But anyway, the point is, I went there, right? And this is only in 1985. 
and and it was all still standing. 1985. About 10 years later, all the slates were gone from the church roof. The tower was in a state of collapse. And now, um, so let me work out my maths. 15, 20, 37 years later, right? It, it's only half standing there now from what it was in 1985. So we can see you know, St. Peter's at Brinner has, has, has really... Has, has really gone down uh, down the drain, but not as rapid. Uh, yeah, St. Mary's, bloody hell. Where do I get St. Peter's from? Anyway, St. Mary's Church, Cairo, right? And, you know, that has massively deteriorated. Um, uh, and our 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 site um, at Brinner, right? St. Peter's at Brinner, um, hasn't deteriorated to such that state, right? So it can still, lots of it can still be saved. Right, so this is what I'm getting at, and I think that I think linking all the four things together, I've said if somebody put a little sign on the wall saying this is St Peter's Church, right? If we had a trail camera sort of aligned on that sign, we we could work out who exactly is damaging the site, who who is not wanting to get the site out there, and then we'll just uh, have a word. Because that's the way we do things in the valleys. We have a word with them, and they won't touch the church. They won't touch the church again. So, this is what I'm thinking, right? I know this sounds a bit. I yeah, I don't care anymore, right? Our heritage is being actively destroyed. You know, I can give you lists of sites. Do you know, we we used to have all these sort of um, mansion houses um, in the late eighties, nineteen nineties, whatever. We used to, loads of mansion houses and sort of semi-falling into ruin and so on. We've got a good example of that in Cardiff. We don't need to mention which one that is either. Anyway, and it just fallen into ruins, right? And you're thinking, well, the next thing that, that comes in is the council knocks them down. I'll give you a good example of what the, what's happening, right? Is at the beginning of the year in Aberira, there was a beautiful um, sort of arms workhouse, right? It was converted into a hospital, right? Nobody was using it for a couple of years. Still had a roof on it, beautiful gables, right? Within a conservation area, it wasn't listed or protected. They just pulled it down in the last few months. Beautiful building, over 150 years old, pulled down, right? Doesn't make any sense. And I know this is, say, sort of modern history, right? But it's important modern history. And, and we're just losing it. No, nobody seems to care. And Cadu are an absolute waste of space. So... I think before St. Peter's did too. Do you know what? What I would suggest is that uh, the tops of the walls are St. Peter's, right? You could get, um, um, I, yeah, I'm just suggesting this. Just go ahead and do it. No, you know, whatever you do is going to safeguard the site, right? So if you get, if you've got a fine mix, ready mix concrete, right? And uh, you you take some, um, a few bottles of water, right? And, and, uh, um, and a trowel, right? Um, as long as you've sort of treated the wall before, you know, um, removed any weeds, got any soil, right? You could cap the walls quite easy at St. Peter's. It doesn't take long. Just, just, uh, just, just regular volunteers going up there with with a couple of buckets and whatever. That site could be preserved quite rapidly, right? I go on, ask me why don't you do it, Carl? Well, the you know. Yeah, I could I could go and do it, but you know I can't do it by myself. Um, you know, I've got a member of archaeology company who's been wanting to go up there for a long, long time to do something, right? But they've been afraid because it was only them. And if we can get a group of people together to monitor it on a daily basis, it will make a big, big difference. And uh, I know a chap called Alan as well. We would go all the way out from Barry to see this site, right? He loves the site. I know loads of people who love it. But anyway, Carl James Langford, I'm wheezing a bit at this minute. Don't bloody know why. It's a bit cold and damp or whatever. But anyway, so anyway, it's gone out live. Um, out on, don't pre forget to press the bell button. You know, when you've liked and subscribed, right, there's a bell button. Press the bell button for updates, right? We've got to do that. Anyway, um, anyway, thanks for everybody's comments and stuff as, as this has been going out live anyway. And uh, 
Hopefully I've answered lots of them as I've been going through. Right. So, so that's been really good. Anyway, many thanks. Keep, keep, keep the love. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it, it's all good. We just got to keep it going. Anyway, uh, uh, responses to what I've said. If you don't like what I said, then suggest something else. Anyway, we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe. Even join. Thank you.